Hey everyone, let's learn how to quickly create the camera cuts, aka how to move the camera from one place to another. So there are two main ways of doing this. One is a faster way and that I use as well. And the second one is a more professional way that I also use. It takes a bit more time, but it's more clean, more polished. So let's cover both, both of these methods. Also, before we continue, make sure you join my Discord server. We are almost at 200 members and we're creating a great community. People are supporting each other. You can share your work, ask for help, ask for feedback or share your feedback, share your experience and all of that stuff. So the link for the Discord will be in the description. So right here, I have a simple scene. So make sure you also have a scene or you can just demonstrate this on a default cube. You can do whatever you want. Just make sure to follow along. Now, the first way of doing this is inserting a keyframe on only one camera. So let's say um, I have a 30 FPS scene, I have 100 frames and let's say I want my camera to look at this tree for one second and then look at this view for another second. So in one second it's looking at the tree only and in the second second it's going to look at this entire view, not only on this tree but it's going to look at the whole city basically. So first thing we need to do is obviously animate our camera. Now I have my camera imported right here and you might be wondering how I have all these black outlines and it's really easy to do. So if you select your camera outline or if you select your camera outside your camera view, then you can go inside the camera properties, scroll down inside the viewport display and then turn on the setting. I can't spell this, I don't know what this is, pass part out probably, but you might have this on default which is 0.5, but if it turns all the way up, you're gonna have the black outlines which is much better to animate and know what you have inside the camera. Also what I like to do is while I'm animating is go up here on this edge, somewhere over here, when you see both of these arrows, left click, vertical split, and then split the screen. Now right here I would like to be inside the camera view, and right here I would like to be outside the camera view to see what's going on. Now, let's say I want my camera to look at this tree. So I'm gonna hover over my timeline, and make sure I'm on frame zero, and make sure I have this set on frame zero as well, and then go to King, and then select location and rotation. After I did that, I'm gonna go to frame zero, make sure I'm on frame zero, hover anywhere on the 3D viewport and then press on I to set a keyframe for the camera. Now, on my right screen, I can click on Shift F or you can click on Shift tilde. Shift tilde is a default setting to enable the fly mode and tilde is the small icon or the small button above the tab key on your left side of the keyboard. Now, I'm also going to turn on screencast keys. I keep forgetting to turn this on in the beginning. So, if I click on Shift F, I'm going to be able to insert the fly mode. But right here, I'm not inside the camera view. I'm just flying in the viewport. So on my right screen, I'm going to click on Shift F. But before I do that, I'm going to go to frame 13. As I said, I want the camera to look at the tree for one second. So I'm going to click on Shift F, move forward using W. You can use WASD to move around. And then if I play back my animation, I have the small motion of my camera going from one side to another, aka from back to forward. Now I'm going to press both, select both of those keyframes, press on A, then T, and then make this linear. Because most times you want your camera movements to be linear. Now there are some cases where you want them to be bezier, follow the curve, and use empties to rotate them, but for this case we need it to be linear and smooth. Now on another second I want the camera to look at this view. So while I have my camera selected, while I'm using the first method, I'm going to go to frame 30 and then press on I. Now, even though the keyframe was set, we still need to press on I to make sure the keyframe is set on all axes and all transforms. Now, I'm going to click on my right arrow on my keyboard. On, uh, I'm going to hover over the timeline first, and then I'm going to click on the right arrow, and that's going to move me forward one frame. Or you can use this section, or you can also drag your timeline. So you have many ways of doing this. But I like to hover over the last frame and use my right arrow to move on the right side or left arrow to move on the left side. You can also jump between the keyframes. So if I click on down arrow, I'm going to jump on frame 0. If I click on up arrow, I'm going to jump on the next keyframe, aka frame 30. So move to frame 31. Uh, again, while I'm inside my camera view, I can click on Shift F, use D, W, A, S, D, and then adjust my camera. Or I can go on my left screen and then adjust my camera this way. I'm going to turn off snapping and I'm going to use the arrows. I can use a G, R, and R, X. Just, I can use any axis I want. So there are two ways of doing this. I like to use the Shift F method most of the time, but if there's something specific I want to adjust, I use the R method, G method outside my camera view. Now, if I play back my animation, you can see this happens. One, and then two. We enter the next shot right here because we inserted one keyframe over here and another keyframe right after the last keyframe. So camera basically jumps in one frame 
and it's not even noticeable that it's moving from one side to another. It's, it appears as if it's a camera cap. Then from here I can continue, move the camera forward using Shift F, press I to set a keyframe, go to next frame, and maybe move the camera closer to the tree, and then get the idea. So this is one method. And then the downside of this method is while you're using motion blur from here, from the viewport, not from the viewport, but from the render properties, or you're using motion blur from the compositing, you have to turn off motion blur right before the camera cuts. Because if you don't turn off the motion blur, you're gonna have the weird warping effects when you import the footage inside the video editor. So you're gonna go before the last frame, set a keyframe, go here, set this to zero, then go here, set this to zero as well, and then go after the last keyframe, and then make sure to turn on the motion blur again. I covered this in detail in my beginner tutorial series part four. So if you wanna learn how to do that, you can check it out. But that's the only downside of this method. Uh, I mean, I mean, there might be other downsides of this method, I don't know. So, so far, the only thing I had to adjust with this method is the motion blur. But yeah, you can add the camera cuts using this method. But another more professional method that some of you already might know is I'm going to delete all of these keyframes. And then here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to duplicate my camera. So I'm going to click on Shift D. First, I'm going to turn off auto keyframing. And let's say I want my first camera to look at this tree. And I want my second camera to look at the other tree. So I'm going to click on Shift D, duplicate this camera. Now, if I click on numpad zero, or if I click on this camera icon, I'm going to enter this camera, the first camera, because that's the active camera. And if I want to enter this camera view, I, I want to make this active. But I can also enter this camera view without this being active. So if I click on control, if I have this camera selected and I click on control numpad zero, you can see that I j just entered my second camera. So I can adjust my second camera with this view, shift F, again, WASD, adjust it, and make sure it's looking at this tree or just looking at anything we want. And then here's what we can do. So first select the first camera, click on control numpad zero again to go inside this view, turn on auto keyframing again, location, rotation, you know the drill, press on I to set a keyframe, go to frame 30, and then click on shift F, and then move this forward, or move this back, just do whatever you want. Now select the second camera, let's go to frame 30, or we can do, we can start at frame 31 if we want, doesn't make too much difference. I'm gonna start at frame 30, Press on control now, hit zero again, go to frame 60, shift F, move it forward. Now, if I play back my animation, if I enter the first camera, click on control now, hit zero, you can see that nothing happens. There is no camera cut. Now, firstly, I'm going to set this to linear, T linear, select the second camera, hover over the timeline, T linear. And then if I want the camera cut to happen right here, here's what I can do. First, select the camera, first camera, go to frame zero and then click on Control b Now Control b is a shortcut to bind the camera to markers. You can also go up here, Marker, and then Add Marker. Then you can also go up here, Marker, and then Bind Camera to Markers. But, you know, who wants to do that? If you want to be cool, you want to use shortcuts. But you can also use this option, we have it right here. So I'm going to Control z the second camera marker, because we don't need it. Now I'm going to go to frame 30, and then I'm going to select the second camera, and then click on Control b and this is, this is gonna bind the second camera. And then if I play back my animation, you can see what happens from here. One camera and then another camera right away. And the upside for this and the reason why this is very good is you're not gonna have any issues with the motion blur because this camera is not gonna have this super quick motion applied to it. Like it's not gonna go from here to here and then the motion blur is not gonna create this weird warping effect. And then if I play back my animation, you can see what happens. And then the great thing about this method again is that you can create like multiple cameras you can use two cameras three or more and then in the beginning of your animation you can position your cameras wherever you want like for example i want this camera to look at this view control numpad zero and then i can position my cameras in the beginning of my animations and then i can keyframe them after i start animating so let's frame uh, let's say on frame 60 i'm gonna a press on a delete all the keyframes and then set the keyframe on frame 60 once again adjust it and then go to frame 80 or frame 90 and then move this forward. Control numb and zero, move this forward. Again, go to frame 60, click on control B, and now I just entered this view. And I have three camera cuts right here, one, two, and then a three. And obviously we need to set this to linear. So yeah, I hope you get the main idea of this. Now, if you don't want to create too many cameras, you can use two or three cameras. So what you can do is after frame 90, you can go somewhere over here, select your first camera, then go back about 
one or two frames. So I'm gonna go back one frame, press on I to set a keyframe, then go forward about on frame 90, press on I to set a keyframe again, and then grab your camera and just move this anywhere you want. Let's say I want to look at this tree from this view, Control 9 plus 0 to adjust it. And then on frame 90, I'm gonna click on Control B once again. And then uh, if I wanna avoid any weird warping effects with motion blur, I don't think I'm gonna have this because I'm jumped from one camera to another. But if you have this, make sure you move your keyframe on the back side. But in this case, if you're using the second method, I don't think you're gonna have the same issues with the motion blur warping effect. So yeah, this is how you can create the camera cuts using either the first method I showed you or using the second method I showed you. And I hope you get the main idea. If you wanna know how to avoid the motion blur warping effect on the first camera method, then be sure to check out the part four of my beginner tutorial series, which will appear on the screen now. So be sure to check it out and I will see you there. Thank you for watching.